we're going to discuss order of operations. This is still a topic for Unit 2, so we're coloring this orange. All right, here we go. To be sure that all mathematic, or excuse me, to be sure that all mathematicians get the same answer when they simplify numerical expressions, they follow a certain set of rules. We call these rules the order of operations. So the first step in the order of operations is to simplify all the grouping symbols. So simplify all operations inside grouping symbols. Grouping symbols include all of the following things. First, parentheses, braces, which are kind of wiggly parentheses, brackets, which look like square parentheses, absolute value, two straight lines, square roots, and the fraction or division bar. Step two is to simplify all exponents. Remember that exponents mean repeated multiplication. Step three is to multiply and divide. Come next, and they're in order from left to right. And last, we add or subtract, add and subtract. So last, this would be addition and subtraction are simplified again from left to right. So four steps. All right, let's move on to a couple of examples. Example number one. So if we take a look here, we have a division bar. That counts as a grouping symbol. So we need to make sure that we treat it as such. So we're going to first simplify the denominator. You can use a V method or an underline method or a highlight method, whatever works for you. So I know that this is my first step right here. So this is 9 minus 10 over, and negative 2 minus 5 more is going to give me negative 7. But we're going to change this question just a little bit to make it a little bit simpler. So let's do negative 2 minus 3. Negative 2 minus 3 gives us negative 5. And if you're struggling to remember the integer rules, you can kind of work it off to the side. Remember, we keep the first integer, we change the minus to a plus, and we take the opposite of the second integer. And then we can add negative 2 plus negative 3 gives us negative 5. It's kind of like a little side bubble, thought bubble, to help us work that denominator. All right. Next step is division, so we're going to do 10 divided by negative 5. Positive divided by a negative gives me a negative, and we copy everything else out uh, straight down. So 9 minus 10 divided by 5 is 2. Again, negative because the signs are opposite. And then 9 minus negative 2 gives us 11. And again, if you needed to think about this, we can do the same thing we did up here. We keep the first integer the same. We change the minus to a plus and we take the opposite of negative 2, which is a positive 2. So that's kind of what you have to think there when you've got the double negative signs. All right, example number 2. We do have some grouping symbols. We've got 10 minus, uh, negative 10 plus 9. So if we add those two together, negative 10 plus 9 gives us a negative 1. Our next step is going to be multiplication. So we multiply. 10 times negative 1, we copy everything else straight down, so 1 minus negative 10. Minus a negative, just like we saw over here, is the same thing as adding a positive. So we can think about this as 1 plus 10. And again, if you need to write that step down, I would highly recommend it. So we think 1 plus 10, and for the second time, our final answer is 11. Example number 3. We've got some exponents here, and we think about exponents as repeated multiplication. So this is not negative 3 times 2. This is actually negative 3 times negative 3. And we can copy everything else down. And I would highly recommend taking a minute to write that exponent out so you can see exactly what that looks like. Now we do multiplication from left to right. Negative 3 times negative 3 gives us 9. And again, copy everything else down in order. Next step is division. 9 divided by negative 3. Positive divided by a negative is a negative, And 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then last but not least, we have negative 3 plus 5. 
signs are the same with these integers, so we can add them. 3 plus 5 is 8, and we keep the sign they share. So the answer to number 3, negative 8. Number 4 is almost the same as number 3, except for one minor detail. The parentheses around the negative 3 are missing. And this makes this problem a little bit different. So for this problem, the squared saw the negative sign and the 3. So your base was a negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3. For this one, the squared only sees the 3 because there's no grouping symbols around there. So this one, the negative hangs out in front, and your base is just the 3. So 3 times 3 divided by negative 3 plus 5. So there is a difference, and you've got to pay careful attention to whether or not the negative is grouped with the integer or not. All right, next step, multiply. Negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Copy the rest down. Notice I'm documenting my thinking. I'm showing everything that I'm doing. Negative 9 divided by negative 3. Both signs are the same, so my answer is positive. 9 divided by 3 is 3 plus 5. And then I can do my addition. Oh, this should be a negative 5. Copy error. Glad I caught that. So we have negative 5 here, 3 plus negative 5, so that gives us answer of negative 2.